What's up Thrashers and welcome back once again to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel and I am back for another episode of Under the Radar for you guys where I take uh, quick briefs at some albums that came out during a specific week that I didn't do a full review for. This week we're taking a look at albums that came out on the weekend of May 27th, the final weekend of the month. And before all that, happy Memorial Day to those yesterday. And, well, let's get started on this video. So, yeah, we had quite a few, <coughs> quite a few really good albums to talk about here. And to get started, we're going to talk, uh, for the first album, Darkened with our album, The Black Winter. This is an international death metal band featuring members from Sweden, the UK, and Canada all coming together to do their own brand of death metal. And given with the uh, imagery, it's definitely more about cold desolation than anything else. Musically speaking, I don't know, it's kind of this oddity, so to speak. It's like a good chunk of this album is very much inspired by Bolt Thrower because there's plenty of groove and plenty of like cool, like catchy riffs. There are even times on this album when I was listening to it where you get a little bit of black metal in there, here and there, in terms of some of the tremolo riffs you get and even some screaming vocals coming in on a few tracks. And along with some of those more groove-oriented songs, I even got little hints of bands like Frozen Soul and Gate Creeper to some extent. As far as the guitar tone, it's not quite HM2, it's almost there. I, perhaps it was HM2 and the Metal Zone pedal combined together, that or I'm just talking out of my ass trying to figure out what this guitar tone was, because it was pretty chunky, but pretty clear for the most part. And the production itself was pretty modern sounding, to say the very least, but has a little bit of a raw edge to it. And for all those reasons, this was actually a really good one. Solid one, 8.5 out of 10. So if you are a fan of like more groove-laden death metal with blackened moments here and there, this might be one for you to check out. I would recommend you guys check it out and form your own opinions. <clears throat> Moving on to the next one, we get Obscene with their album From Dead Horizon to Dead Horizon. This is another death metal release. It's pretty much most of this episode is going to be packed with death metal except for one album. But with this one by Obscene, this is my first... Again, pretty much all these albums are my first time listening to all these bands and hearing about these bands. With this album from Obscene, definitely kind of trying to bring in some old school death metal. Like there was plenty of great chugs on this album. That definitely remind me of bands like Blood Red Throne, Cannibal Corpse, Broken Hope. But there's even little hints of melody here and there on some songs. And also, when it comes down to packing a punch, pretty much all of these songs pack a punch for the most part. Also... The thing that's really unique is the vocal style. Like, the vocals are more of that, like, barking, like, torturous sound. Almost like Martin Van Drunen and John Tardy inspired type of vocals. Which, combined now with the more heavy, chugging, like, almost cannibal corpsey kind of style, definitely is an interesting dynamic, to say the very least. And the production, once again, kind of that middle balance between raw grit and that more modern clean sound so it's like right in the middle of both of those avenues in terms of production and for all those reasons i also give this album an 8.5 out of 10 another solid death metal album from the underground scene that you guys should check out Next up, we're going to be continuing on the death metal path. We've got Heaving Earth with their album Darkness of God. So this is, I believe, their third studio album. My first time checking them out. Obviously got interested in this one because of the name Heaving Earth. Obviously taking that from the Morbid Angels song, Heaving Earth. And, well, 
There's a good chunk of Morbid Angel influence on here, but at the same time, there's a lot of emulation on here because there are some like evil, atonal riffs going on here that remind you of a band like Emulation. And it's really kind of that way during the first half. Like, the first half of this album is very much akin to Morbid Angel and Immolation, and even a little bit of Hate Eternal as well. That dissonant, atonal, atmospheric, evil sound. But then you get into the second half of the album where things really take a turn in terms of songwriting. Like, it goes from being all about being an atmospheric death metal band to turning almost into a progressive death metal band. Then again, like songwriting wise, in terms of the way the songs were put together on this album, definitely feels very proggy. But in the second half, you get more melody and even more somber, melancholic atmosphere going on, especially in the later tracks towards the end of this album. So it's like total like 180 in terms of like the first half. Like I said, the first half, very dissonant, very atonal, very evil sounding. Then in the second half, they keep some of those elements there, but add in more melody, more melancholic atmosphere, and more songwriting chops. And for those reasons, I give this album a 9 out of 10. This was a great one to check out, so... If you are a fan of bands like Morbid Angel, Immolation, Hate Eternal, and even bands like Mithras and so on and so forth, like that almost proggy atmospheric death metal, this one will definitely be right up your alley. Now we get into the fourth album of this episode, and we are talking about Sadistic Drive with their album Perpetual Torture. This is the second album from this Finnish death metal band. First time checking these guys out. Now, despite the fact that they are a Finnish death metal band, this does not really sound like classic Finnish death metal at all. If anything, this sounds like a more raw, nasty version of classic American death metal. Like, there's some... Every once in a while you get some, like, doomy breaks, some really killer grooves thrash blast beats galore this album was like an amalgamation of bands like cannibal corpse autopsy even like malevolent creation monstrosity even little hints of like suffocation at times like it's very brutal it's very heavy not a whole lot of melody on here but they do this style pretty pretty gruesome like this style is very gruesome in terms of their death metal like, very brutal, very riff-driven, riff-focused, and I absolutely loved it. There was some really catchy hooks on here. Despite the lack of melody, they make up for it with catchy hooks, with the riffing, and the vocals. Just downright gross and disgusting. Even some screams come in every once in a while. But yeah, the thing I really latched onto with this album was actually not only just the musical inspiration... But the production, the production definitely felt like late 80s, early 90s Tampa death metal with even a little bit of like that autopsy grit to it. I give this one a 9.5 out of 10. This one I'm thinking of picking up at some point before the year is over and wow. I just couldn't believe how nasty and fun this album was. I absolutely loved it. But now we get to the final album, and the only non-death metal album for this week, and that is the new Lord Belial album, Rapture. Of course, I've heard this name come up every once in a while in terms of black metal, and I finally checked it out. So while looking at their Metal Archives page, I saw they were very much compared to bands like Dissection, Folkandra, Sacramentum, Necrophobic, so kind of like that... Melodic death metal meets black metal style. And I was not disappointed when hearing this. Like, the production is kind of almost classic, like, polished classic black metal. Kind of like, um, like the last Mortem album, for example. It's, like, not raw, but it's not, like, super polished. It's, like, well, it's, like, nice and natural sounding. You get your classic black metal tropes, those fast tremolo riffs and blast beats, 
but we get dynamics on here. Like they're able to kind of calm things down and build up to the big, heavy, epic, melodic moments. But the thing that kind of prevents this from being straight up black metal 100% is you do get some like death metal chugs and even occasional death metal vocals here and there. But these chugs that come in kind of helps with that more death metal side like almost like a bit of like a bolt thrower stomp but for the most part this is just evil sinister heavy melodic black metal death metal whatever you want to call it i'm gonna say it, it's pretty much like like 90 percent black metal and like 10 percent death metal but it's very melody driven and i absolutely love this one this up there with inophilion is in contention for my favorite black metal album of 2022. I give this a 9.5 out of 10. This is some fantastic work from a Swedish band that's been killing it for many, many years, but just kind of in and out in terms of like consistency with putting out music. Here they put out a new one and my first time checking this band out and yeah, it definitely brought me back to Dissection and recent Necrophobic for damn sure. And I absolutely loved it. But of course, those are just my opinions on all these albums. Of course, these albums will be in the description box below for you guys to check out. What did you guys think of these albums if you checked them out? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, horns high. See you soon. At the ballpark. Someone's going to put lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> I took a tomato. Okay, yeah, it's it's Levi. It's Levi. Damn it, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Could I? Oh, yeah. I don't know what he got for this one. All right, Seth, let's go to Tomato Town. <laughs> Seth is I, would, I would I would like a single slice of your greatest tomatoes in the park. Finest tomato, please. <laughs> No, it's no, it, it's Levi. Levi's the one that has some Levi's the majority. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my lord. <laughs> that breed. Oh, tomato. Dude. I'm gonna be really uh, interested to see these prompts. <laughs> yeah, like, like literally. Uh, me out the ballpark. Cute. I just wanted to eat my tomato. <laughs>